All right, guys, Kevin the Toy Smuggler here, uh, doing something a little different. I'm going live in the afternoon. Uh, reason I'm doing this is I talked to a good friend of mine today, Michael Gunter. He's the one I told you guys. He's the owner of Battlegrounds Comics and Games, where I do do all my restoration stuff. I go down there and help with sales and the store setup and stuff like that. Great. Uh, if you're ever looking for vintage toys, comics, and gaming stuff, I'm telling you, if you're anywhere near Dalton, that is the store to go to. I'm telling you, just great service. And they just got so much cool retro stuff, new stuff if you're looking for it, hot toys, statues, sideshow, you name it. These guys got a little bit of everything. I mean, it's amazing how much quality stock they got. Well, anyway, when I was talking to him today, we got on the subject about the new G.I. Joe Classified, the six-inch scale. And I, I, I was, you know, we both had some different thoughts on it. And like I said, this is not a uh, a review per se. It's more of, you know, just wondering what was going on. You know, what what is a Hasbro's direction here? And this is not a slam session. That's just something I don't do. I don't get on here and uh, knock anybody or try to be ugly or rude. There's enough people out there right now that's uh, just rude. <laughs> don't need anybody else uh, to add to the deal. So, but I am... Uh, just a little shocked on some of the decisions and I'm really unclear on the direction here. We see, uh, and most everybody, if you're watching this, you know, the figures I'm talking about. So I set up the screen here to kind of, so I can point and show you guys what I'm talking about. Kind of instead of flipping the camera, around, just trying something new here. So of course we got Scarlet here, uh, the four figures and, uh, this one right here, honestly, I, I was, I was kind of underwhelmed by, it. you know, Scarlet was one of my favorite characters. Uh, her and uh, Lady J were both amazing characters in the cartoon and stuff. But when uh, looking at this character, they uh, done so much updates to her. I mean, other than the face, the rest of her down. I mean, it's uh, very high tech. I give it that. I mean, but I honestly wish with this character, I got another picture here I can bring up. Let's see here. Right here, here's the full body shot and everything. And uh, I mean, other than, like I said, the face sculpt is great. And uh, But the rest of it, other than a different kind of crossbow, which I think the crossbow is fine. It looks a little bit more modern. And I, I honestly, if you put a different head on this and change the weapon, I honestly might not have seen right off the bat that this was a Scarlet figure. So I'm, I'm just a little, don't know, uh, you know, is there, I don't know if there is a, uh, this is what she looked like maybe in the latest uh, comic book or whatever, or maybe there's something new getting ready to come out. And this is her outfit. I, I don't know, but just, just thinking back right off the bat, you know, this is a, might as well say this is a retro product. You know, this comes from my era, uh, early eighties, 82, I believe is when they came out. And I just honestly don't understand uh, Hasbro's game on this perfect figure pick out of the four. I get it. I just, Honestly, I wish what they could have done here was took the basic look from what we remember as a cartoon and in the four inch scale figure and maybe uh, Google some image of the female military girls. That's from like Desert Storm because they're, you know, shows all the different gear. Maybe start with the uh, basic look that she had from the cartoon and the toy, then have her come with these different modern gear to add on as accessories. I think that would kind of give it update, but yet, depending on how you wanted to showcase the figure, you could have dressed it or undressed it. So I think that might have made it a little bit more accurate. This seems more fantasy, and I'm not against fantasy, but I, want, I think but I think the best years of G.I. Joe was the military years versus the getting off into the fantasy and the bright colors. And all that was stemming from the popularity of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and stuff. So I'm just, uh, just like I said, I'm not knocking the figure, but I'm just, as a 1982 kid that was buying G.I. Joe toys, uh, these kind right here, you know, you got the original Baroness here, and I got a clutch, you know, very, uh, even though she was all clad in black, you know, she had that German officer kind of look. She she looked bad to the bone. So, and and this right here, they just they tried something new, and it's 
I don't know. I, and maybe this is just something they're coming out with this, and maybe later on they'll have an excuse to come out with the other one. But I honestly think if you're going to come out with a retro six inch scale figure, you know, you take back like what Hasbro did with Star Wars. The first line of figures looked just like they did in the first movie. Common sense. It worked. This here, totally different approach. So then we go on to uh, Duke here. Duke, not bad. I have to say, I mean, this seems like a decent upgrade version of the action figure I had as a kid. There's a, obviously some minor little changes, but when I glance at that, I see the character Duke. I mean, he looks uh, very well sculpted and looks like he even might have a scar on his head. Don't mind. Looks like he's got some updated uh, shin and knee pads, but that kind of, you know, looks like some of the new stuff that's out in the military today. But yet, when you glance at it, he's got the tan shirt, sleeves are rolled up, blonde crew cut. I mean, that that's Duke. So I think they did a good job with this one. I really, I'm really pleased with that. And he's got these cool little binoculars here. Looks like they're updated. Got another shot of him here. And uh, this one here just shows a view of the backpacks of this. Really reminds me of one of those backpacks we had as a kid. Except. It looks like it's just got a little bit more detail. It's better. You know, they didn't paint <laughs> the old backpacks. Whatever color they molded them, that was it. So, but yet again, this harkens back to the original G.I. Joe scale uh, and size and sculpt and look and aesthetic. It really, I see this, I see Duke. So, uh, overall, I think they've done an excellent job. I just wish they would have took her and approached it the way they did him. And uh, the next one here is Roadblock. Let's see here. Uh, it's kind of a wash out here, but uh, if you've seen this figure, I'm, I'm going to touch at a loss at this one right here. Uh, yes, that looks perfect sculpt in the, in the face of Roadblock. Sorry, it's just a lot of white here, too much white, and it's glaring. But either way, I mean, you know the, what I'm talking about here, and I don't know what's up with this big freaking gun. I mean, uh, I, this right here, just kills it. The big gun and the clothes, not, it may be just the gun throw me off. It just really does not go. This is, his overall look seems a little bit more high tech versus the old school military. So I would have to say he's slightly better than the Scarlet, but definitely a lot, let luck, last or luck, whatever you want to call it. Maybe you can see this picture a little bit better. Here's him in the packaging. Here, yeah, this is a little bit better. He looks a little bit better just without the gun being in the forefront and stuff like that. But uh, but I had to say the packaging artwork. Uh, I don't know. It just when I remember when I think of GI Joe, I think of those black packages with that big burst of red and yellow pixelated background and stuff. And I think they could have really kept all the black here went with that same kind of background that you've seen on every behind every figure on those cards and then then put the figure on there. So I don't know what's the deal with the no whole new look and style here. This part I don't mind. I think if you they would have went with a slick black old school logo with the red and white uh, pixelated deal in the background, then this right here would have been fine. But this blue I only know it looks like some kind of high tech uh, visual screen or some kind of computer screen or something. But either way, I just don't think it just don't screen classic GI Joe figures to me. So, so I, and like I said, like I said, hey guys, this is my opinion. I'm not trying to force my opinion. Uh, we, like I said, I was with a friend of mine, Michael Gunner, today, and we was uh, we, we was talking on the phone today, and we just got on this subject. But then the last figure they're coming up with here. Open up this figure. Boom. Snake eyes. And even though, unfortunately, we're probably not going to get all this extra cool stuff in the stores, but if you look at it just from the figure standpoint, I really like what they did with Snake Eyes. I mean, Snake Eyes, to me, uh, was just a great, cool character back in the day. He, you know, silent, never said anything. You never saw his face, but yet he was just bad to the bone, and you just couldn't help but the, he was almost like the Boba Fett kind of character he you just wanted to know more about him 
and stuff. And even though he does have a slight kind of modern look, boom, just within a quick glance, that's Snake Eyes. You can tell by the weapons he's got, the backpack, just the overall uh, style of clothing stuff. That's him all the way. And all this extra stuff here. I hate that this something this cool is going to be a convention exclusive only. I, I kind of, I really hate that. So, and the other picture shows a little bit better close up of all this. Man, like I said, y'all, I mean, y'all seen the pictures here, but just a great skull. I think, and I'm hoping, I don't know if I had an extra picture of this. I can't remember if I saved it or not. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and end with this right here. Uh, I'll scoot it over. Uh, but what we got here, you see a picture, a touch of the picture of the, of the timber. I don't know if I can get timber in this shot. He's showing a little bit there. I'm hoping this is what we get in the regular packages that hits the stores and stuff like that. And uh, and that looks really cool. They look like they really, other than being a light gray, this looks more black. Still looks like a great skull. Like I said, I think out of these four figures, between this figure and the Duke, I think they done really good. I think this is a home run 100%. Whoever worked on this obviously didn't work on the others, I don't think, because you can't do this good and then drop the ball on the other characters. I, I just I just I just don't see. I think they probably had more like they had probably four different designers on all different because, you know, trying to meet the, the time restraints and stuff like that. But I really think they hit a home run here. Duke was a looks like a good solid figure. It really does. But I think on the Scarlet and Roadblock. This figure I probably might end up getting, but I have to say uh, Duke kind of on the fence, but it's, he still looks like a great figure. But I'm, I'm I'm hoping that they do really good on the Zartan. I'm a huge Zartan fan. That, that Zartan, the whole Dreadnoughts, Zartan, Buzzer, Torch, and Ripper. I would love to have that set if they do them good. I, I'm almost afraid since what they did with Roadblock here, and kind of went a little extra fantasy and a little extra sci-fi fantasy with a Scarlet, I'm almost afraid what they might do with Zartan. Uh, unfortunately, the only good Zartan I've ever seen is the original Zartan that they first came out with. So I would hope they would look at that. Uh, I believe it was a Sumbo cartoon. Look at that and really hold true. And like I said, I'm not saying this to bash Hasbro. I'm not a, and I'm not a Hasbro basher, by the way. I don't, don't you know, I don't like every choice that they make. But like I always said, they, uh, when they make stuff for, uh, like the Star Wars product exclusively, they're, they make product for Disney. So they got someone from Disney telling them what to do. So you can't really bash Hadbro for a lot of the decisions they might have done with the figures when there's probably somebody at Disney over them telling them to do stuff, like putting that stupid Nerf gun in a Millennium Falcon. Why? I don't why I just horrible choice. Babe. Nerf and Star Wars ships, please never again. That just I, anyway back to GI Joe. But like I said, I hope they can take these first four and I, and I think I've heard some other people make some similar comments like I've made today. Oh, we got retro blasting here. Such a missed opportunity. Agree, I agree with you, Michael. I agree with you. It just. I think uh, if they would have went back to the original look from the cartoon and just kept it simple and went with simple, like I said, with the packaging idea, I think it would have been a huge home run. Because I think they're trying to cater a little bit to hopefully some new kids. But listen, people, this is an old school product. We're, the, we're in our 40s. We got jobs. We got money. We got money to buy this stuff. So don't cater to some little kid who probably may not care cater to us guys who really want this stuff. So I was who definitely a home run, of course, as always. Only good one in exclusive. I agree with you. I, I, I have to agree that out of, out of the four, this is a true 100 percent Duke, I, I I'd give him an 80, you know, eight out of 10, maybe seven at worst case, if you want to be nitpicky on him and stuff like that. But the roadblock and scarlet, uh, I had to say I'm 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 I'm, I'm disappointed. I, I will not buy those. So, but like I said, guys, this is my opinion. I'm not here to uh, shove it down anybody's throat or anything like that. But I did, I hope Hasbro kind of listens to different comments like this right here. And, and like I said, I'm not here to bash them, but they need to realize this type of product 
like, like I, hate, I hate to refer to Mattel about this, but Mattel is when they're coming out with this new He Man line, it looks like they are thinking about us. What would we like? Even though they're approaching the kids, but they're approaching the kids through the wrestling, getting them slowly introduced to the He Man property. Then, but as far as the look of the figures, it's all about what we had as a kid. So I think that is a very, that's the first toy company I've heard in a long time that's really, I think, put some serious thought on how to approach a retro product. It's all about quality, staying true to the story, and staying true to the characters. And I think here is a ex good example of two thumbs up, and there's some uh, obviously some others that's not any thumbs up. So, but guys, I'm the toy smuggler. Uh, see here. Just don't see a kid who loves Fortnite going after G.I. Joe try, trying to be. Yeah, I have to agree with you, Michael. Yeah, I, unfortunately, the newer kids, if you go to Walmart today and go down the toy aisle, it's some weird looking funky stuff on the shelves. I mean, Fortnite's one of them. I mean, you got this a lot of, uh, what, Five Nights of Freddy? I mean, that's a weird product line. And, uh, and that, oh gosh, what's that insane, stupid uh, school teacher principal uh, body? Oh my gosh. When I heard my daughter, watching that no that no that barney that uh, ain't gonna happen so th there's a, it's a lot of there's a lot of crap out there people and this right here was like one of the top three toy products that came out in the 80s star wars gi joe and he-man and any toy company that comes back and wants to revisit this they really need to step back and think who is your market and it's us the 40 year guy or go guys and up and they need to stay true to the product instead of worrying about catering to some new, new kid and stuff. See here. They keep on making one mistake after another. And, and, and you would think after a while, and this is their product, if I'm not mistaken. So you think I, I I'm actually, I'm, I'm very shocked out of these four. They didn't hit, a four out of four on it. Really, this was an easy one. G.I. Joe should be simple. Keep it simple. Keep it military. Keep it true to the cartoon. Bam. Winner. You're, we're going to love it. We're going to buy it. it. You put this kind of sculpt and put the right detail and put all that articulation in it. Like I said, you did it here. What happened to the... Like I said, I think they probably put their best guy and they teared it down. And the sad thing is, if that's the other three guys' best work, ooh, I hope whoever's in charge of this goes back and oversees everybody else what they're doing. That's what I that's what I hope. So, but guys, like I said, that's just my quick thoughts on this. I don't want to drag it out. Like I said, I'm not here bashing Hasbro, but I I have to say I am at a, a bit of a shock and a, a little bit disappointed. And like I said, I I hope somewhere down the line they make. The clutch, clutch and breaker was my first two to action figures from GI Joe, and I hope. Listen up, please stay true to this. I would love to see this in a six-inch scale. So, and it and it looks very similar to this. That'd be nice, but let's see. Let's hope. Like I said, I hope it straightens up. So, <laughs> you guys have a good evening. I'm Kevin the Toy Smuggler. You guys have a great day.